In 2002, baseball was forever changed and it was never the same. This was when the philosophy of Moneyball was created. Moneyball was invented by the Oakland Athletics that year and the idea of Moneyball is playing winning baseball with a very limited payroll. Since 2002, we have seen several different teams attempt and fail at Moneyball, but there's one team in particular that has succeeded, regardless of a failed ownership, an awful stadium with no one in attendance. That team is the Tampa Bay Rays. For a long time, the Rays were known as a poverty franchise. I mean, they simply just didn't win anything. But then something started to click. In 2017, they won 80 games. In 2018, they did still miss out on the playoffs, but to be fair, they did win 90 games. This was the beginning of winning in Tampa Bay. This was, of course, the modern day money ball. And what I mean by that is that no, they did not spend any money, they gave out no big contracts. They were still a small market as ever, but they've shown to be one of the smartest teams in baseball at this point. No team wants to make a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays, because 95% of the time, you are going to be fleeced. They've been building their team for several years now, and in 2018, they traded veteran pitcher Chris Archer to the Pittsburgh Pirates. In this trade, the Rays got three young players, outfielder Austin Meadows, pitcher Shane Boz, and pitcher Tyler Glasnow. This trade ended up being a staple for the Tampa Bay Rays and is now what is sparking their team being built. They made the playoffs in 2019 and they got past the wildcard round by beating the Athletics. Unfortunately though, they were eliminated, but at the same time, this was the beginning of something special. In 2020, the Rays managed to get right back into the playoffs with ease. But again, there was a big reason for this. One of the key factors was that they of course traded for star outfielder Randy Arozarena before the 2020 season. Arozarena had made his debut with the Cardinals one year before. He only had 20 at-bats in 2019, but the Rays saw him as a must-get. And that's exactly what they did, they got him, but he only ended up being in the batter's box 60 times in the 2020 regular season. But in the postseason, this guy was a key contributor and was incredible. They ended up making it all the way into the World Series, and this is really when Arozarena shined. He had a 364 batting average, 3 home runs, and 4 RBIs in 6 World Series games. While they of course did end up losing, it was very clear that they had a rising star on their hand with Randy Arozarena. Now, next season, things started to change for Tampa. Arozarena had a 274 batting average, 20 home runs, and Arozarena was a star that Tampa Bay hoped that he would turn into. But he wasn't the only young rising star, because the other one was none other than starting pitcher Shane McClanahan. In 123 innings, the young pitcher had a 343 ERA. He was clearly very good, and was of course only going to be getting better. They ended up losing in the divisional round in 2021 to the Boston Red Sox, but one thing was clear. This team had a great major league team that had rising prospects all over the board. And as we know, of course, this year, they had one specific rising star that everyone was talking about. That player was Wander Franco. Franco was a young kid, you know, only about 20 years old, and he was making his major league debut as the number one prospect in all of baseball. Everyone expected him to be good right off the get-go, and that's exactly what he was. He was very, very good. He had a 288 batting average and 281 at-bats. Going into the next season, the Rays made a bunch of moves, and free agent signing wise, no, there was not really much at all, but the trade market for Tampa was absolutely filled, I mean they were very very active, and remember how I said that they traded for outfielder Austin Meadows a few seasons ago? Well, they went ahead and traded him to the Tigers in 2021, or I guess again I should say the offseason of 2021 going into 2022. In return for Meadows, they got Isaac Brady's. They also managed to trade for Harold Ramirez and gave up nearly nothing to the Cubs. And this offseason, they also went ahead and extended Wander Franco. It was an 11 year deal with $182 million. They were very, very active in this offseason, and that much was clear. As far as how their 2022 season ended up going, well, it really wasn't that great if I'm going to be real with you. They were a good team, I mean, 86 wins, blah, 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 but. It still wasn't necessarily good enough to even get them a playoff win, so they had a lot to do in the next offseason. In the offseason, they went ahead and signed Phillies pitcher Zach Eflin to a three-year $40 million contract. Eflin was a good pitcher for the Phillies, so that was a pretty good move that I at least thought, and you know, I knew it was going to benefit the Rays, but outside of that, there was really no groundbreaking Rays news. 
to start the season, the Rays were the best team in baseball. The guy who they got in the Austin Meadows trade, of course, aka Isaac Brady's, he ended up being really, really good. He had insane power and was doing really, really well walking and, of course, hitting a good average. To go along with that, Harold Ramirez was performing like an absolute superstar. A Rosarina, of course, continued to be himself, and this team was just unstoppable offensively and pitching-wise. Up until about June, you know, it was clear that they were the best in about June, but it started to all just kind of crumble, and... What happened was July comes along and we get awful news regarding Wander Franco. There was something really, really bad going on and Wander Franco is with a 14-year-old girl. So, obviously, Major League Baseball launched an investigation on him. And just like that, they lost their star shortstop for not just one year, but potentially his entire career. Then, next month comes along and they lose their best pitcher to injury. That pitcher is Shane McClanahan, of course a top 5 pitcher in baseball and healthy, but unfortunately, he had to get Tommy John in the middle of August. The worst part about it is that he will not be able to pitch next year either because of this injury. Again, so many things piled down on them all at once. They lost multiple pitchers to Tommy John, they lost their star shortstop, and they ended up getting eliminated in round one of the playoffs. The Rays have absolutely got to rebuild next year, and there's no telling me otherwise. I mean, the player that you gave an 11-year deal to will never play again. The pitcher who led your rotation in 2023 will not pitch in 2024. At the end of 2023, they were hanging on by a thread, and they were somehow winning. But the odds of that happening next year to me, it just seems so, so slim. A lot of things went right for the Rays, and I will give them that. But I think 2024 is going to be a season where they are not very competitive. They have young stars, they have talent. But for a team that does not spend money, they have got to rebuild. And when I say rebuild, no, I don't mean go ahead and trade everyone. I don't mean that you have to go ahead and just change the whole team around, right? Because clearly they have good players. They can win. But what you have to imagine is that the Red Sox are about to spend a lot of money. I mean, the reports so far have been that the Red Sox are targeting top pitching and won at least three pitchers. If that's the case, the Red Sox are going to be pretty good next year. Of course, you have the Yankees. They're looking to bring in Juan Soto or Cody Bellinger or even both of them. I mean, the Yankees are looking to be a lot better. They will not be a free win like, of course, what they were last year. And then you have, I guess, the Orioles. I mean, the Orioles were incredible last year and will likely win the AL East. It's just really, really tough. And you got to imagine it's going to be hard to win that division. Every single team is going to be competitive. Of course, the Blue Jays, they're not just going to go ahead and lay down. The Blue Jays will for sure go ahead and make multiple, multiple moves as they always do. So, I don't know, I really think if there's any year for the Rays to say, hey, clearly, you know, we're very, very injured, we need to go ahead and fix something, and maybe they end up trading a few guys away. But they have young talent, it'll be really interesting to see what they end up doing. And what's really interesting, of course, is that we could be seeing Tyler Glasnow get traded very, very soon. Again, Glasnow was in that trade featuring Chris Archer all those years ago. He's been with the team since 2018. The only issue with Tyler has, of course, been injuries. I mean, he has been made of absolute glass. But last year, he was definitely really, really good, putting up a 3.53 ERA. So it'll be really, really interesting to actually see what they do there. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving. Let me know what you guys thought of this video, and peace out.